All right. So today it's day four. Day four of our summer boot camp chugging along. We have learned stocks. We have learned what is the stock market. We have learned different exchanges. We have learned why we day trade, perks of day trading, why people aren't successful in day trading. We have learned nine different strategies that people like to use while day trading. Now, before we get into more of the strategies and actually performing those strategies to become successful day traders, we do still need to just lay down a little bit more groundwork. And that's what, you know, today is going to be, you know, we're going to have a lesson today. That's going to be an hour long uh, this morning. And we're also going to have a lesson this afternoon, which is going to be at an hour long. So what I want to talk about in this segment is going to be different sites and different brokers that you guys can use. Now, what do you mean different sites? What does that mean? Well, I'm all about helping you out as much as I can. I don't need you guys. I don't want you guys to be going out constantly and spending money, right? So many people do that. How many people have went out and spent money on something that they're like, oh, wow, I probably could have just found that out online. Oh, I spent money on, you know, $700 or whatever for something that wasn't really that valuable to me because I'm trying to learn this, right? I want to be able to help you guys out as best as I can and save your money. You guys are working so hard. You guys are taking time out of your day, as I said, to watch this. So you guys don't need to go ahead and spend extra money on things that you guys don't need. So over my years of trading, there are a lot of sites that you can get a lot of good information on for absolutely free. So I want to go over that. On top of that, every single stock trader is going to need a broker. If you don't have a broker, you can't go ahead and perform trades. That's why we have a broker. You know, we don't have a person we probably call up anymore and we say, hey, can you, you know, put me on this stock? We can do it ourselves. It's all electronic now. We could do it from our home, right? But we still need a platform, a program to go ahead and put our orders to the NASDAQ, to the New York Stock Exchange. And we're going to be diving into what brokers I use and we're going to be diving into uh, what brokers you may want to use. So first things first, let's go into this and let's talk about some free sites. So it really comes down to these sites right here. We are going to have Finviz, Yahoo, CNBC, Tradecaster, Penny Stocks, Earnings Whisperer, Investopedia, StockCharts.com, TradingView, TraderView, Twitter, StockTwits.com, and Zax. So I want to be able to show you guys each of these and how you guys can use them. All right? So first things first, guys, let's start with finviz.com. And this is going to be a little bit more interactive, as I said, uh, with not just following a PowerPoint. We're going to be diving into you know, a lot of these. So let's start with finviz.com. And let's bring this up. So what is finviz.com? Finviz.com is an absolute free site. A lot of these sites, if you want to get a little bit more information, you guys can go ahead and buy a membership if you guys would like to. But you know, you don't need to get any sort of membership on these sites because they give you so much information absolutely for free. And it's really all that you guys really need. So finviz.com is one of the sites that I used all the time when I first started trading. So what does it tell me? Well, right on the homepage, I'm seeing all the top gainers of the day. I'm seeing all the stocks that are hitting new highs, uh, that are overbought, unusual volume, upgrades, earnings, insider buying, top losers, new lows, right? Oversold. We're seeing most active earnings, insider selling, right? We're seeing stocks that have trend line supports going up, trend line supports going down, wedges, right? Wedge down. Look at all this great information. How, how again, our sectors that we already talked about, our indexes, are the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500, how they're doing, right? This was one of my favorite, one of my go-to places that I always went to when I didn't have much money and I first started trading the stock market, all right? Because every single day, I would wake up and i say, I don't have scanners yet. I don't have different scanners that I can use. So all I would do is go to finvis.com and just keep refreshing this. And when I refreshed it, I was able to see different top gainers, different top losers. And I was able to see you know, uh, a lot of great information where a lot of you know, eyes were at, where a lot of the hype was at, where a lot of the activity was at. Now, one of the best things that you guys can do as well is I always call this the free homework assignment. If you want to be a great stock trader, one of the things that I did, which I still like to do, as we just do it in chat now, is I like to figure out what makes the best a top gainer a top gainer. 
you study the characteristics of a top gainer to be able to figure out the characteristics of a future top gainer. Does that make sense? That's why, you know, basketball players, you know, study, you know, you want to be great, you study LeBron James. You want to be great at football, you study Tom Brady, right? You, you study, you know, the top gainers because what they have, the characteristics will lead to future top gainers. So I would go through every single day and go to XELA. Why is XELA up 31%? Well, does it have a press release? Does it have a chart set up? Does it have something to do with its you know, float, insider buying, the RSI, indicator squeeze, something? OTLK, why is this stock up 28%? Figure it out. Now you do this enough, you're going to see a lot of similarities. You're going to see similarities in press releases. You're going to see similarities in chart setups. You're going to see similarities in maybe things in the back end with insider buying or different floats or EP ratios or whatever that could be. You're going to see some similarities. Same exact thing with top losers. Let's say you're a shorter and you want to figure out, you know, why are some of these stocks dumping? We'll figure it out. AETI, why is the stock down 45%? There has to be a reason. Has to be a reason on DLPN. There has to be a reason on LLNW, right? But this is a great so a site to just see what's currently moving if you don't have, you know, professional scanners. And it's a great site still that I like to use to check out the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P 500. What I also like to use finviz.com for is the screener. This screener, guys, is absolutely great because the screener is going to be able to help you guys filter out many different plays. Let's say I'm looking for penny stocks. I go to price underneath $10. I can go to relative volume, you know, a little bit hot today, over $3. I can go to technical, look for RSI, stocks that are more on the oversold part. So out of all the stocks, right, I have 38 stocks now that are oversold that are pretty hot today, that are inside my price range, right? And I can go ahead and check all these out. Now, there are so many different things, as you guys can tell, right? There are a total of 7,679 stocks, and we can filter them out so many different ways. So if you guys want to, again, I always like to give you guys that, that option, head over, to, head over to our YouTube channel, right? Head over to our YouTube channel. If you guys type in Decmar Trades right here, you guys are going to have our YouTube channel where we have 270 videos. And one of our really good videos right here is the best free screeners where we go over Finviz and we go over all the different screeners and the settings that you guys can set up to get what you want. If you want breakouts, there's different things we show. If we want dip buys, there's different things we show. If you want a short, there's different you know, settings that you guys can do, right? So, you know, that's absolutely great. Let's say if you like, you know, maybe some certain pattern right? You want to see a possible squeeze. Look at all the wedges. You got a whole bunch of different wedge patterns right here, right? You know, so you could, you know, base it off of different, um, you know, different uh, patterns, right? Ownership, insider buying, right? You could look at performances, um, you know, anything that you really want. You know, Finviz is going to be such a great site and I highly recommend them because I think they're so great at what they do, right? That's why I use them because I think they're so great at what they do. Now, again, you can go ahead and use a membership if you guys would like to. But again, I don't really think you need to. But Finviz is one of the best sites out there. It's absolutely great for us, you know, stock traders, to be able to stay alert and, and, you know, know what's going on in this market. Moving on to our next one. What do we have? This is what everyone should really have as their homepage, Yahoo Finance. You are going to be using Yahoo Finance so much, Right? So you're going to be using Yahoo Finance so much, and you can type in any stock you want, right? If we want to type in, you know, a Netflix, type it in, and you are going to get the information, and you're going to get correct information, right? Now, Netflix is a little bit out of our price range. Let's say we want to type in CLSN, right? This stock was, you know, moving on up a little bit. We could see the last time it had its press releases right here, right? We could see it's open. We could see the bid, the ask, the days range, the 52-week range, the volume today compared to the average volume. So again, we could see, you know, the average volume is 111,000, volume today, 7,000. It's not really that hot right now, right? We see the PE ratio, market cap, one-year target, right? Where it's valued at. So it gives us a great summary of the, our play right away. We also do have some charting right here. Right? If we want to look at different charting and you know, go over that, see what you maybe where some highs are. And when we click statistics, we get everything we need to know on statistics. Right? Shares outstanding, the float held by insiders, held by institutions right here. This is all the information we need to get out of the back end of that play. Right? 
we can also see where that stock is at, right? You know, all right, this is in Lawrenceville, New Jersey, right? It's a biotech stock in the healthcare sector, right? We can really get a lot of research done and you'll understand our stock, you know, that we're investing in more completely just by looking at Yahoo Finance. It gives us a great understanding of what we need to know. We can all see, again, the S&P 500 down, NASDAQ, Russell 2000, just at the top, just like finviz.com has it. But whatever we need, again, we can get the summary right here, right? We can get the summary on these plays. We can get the statistics on these plays. We can get the profile on these plays. I don't really look at too often conversations. This is just a lot of fluff in here. You know, people that, you know, are kind of more just trying to pump and dump the stock and no one really types in here that often anyway. Um, so again, you don't really need to look in there. It's more about finding the press releases that come out on these plays. It's more about understanding the summary of that stock and it gives you a great overview of that play. So Yahoo Finance, one of those that are very great. Another one that's good, nice blog site, allpennystocks.com. Right, allpennystocks.com. It's a, you know a good blog site that keeps you up to date of what's going on. You know in penny stocks. One of the best things that I like to do is go to hot penny stocks. So you can go to hot you know current penny stocks, and then we could see Nasdaq. So again, we're going to be able to click here, and we're going to see some of the hottest stocks in all of the penny stock world, right? And that's good to know because we want to see what stocks are moving. We want to see what stocks have some of the best potential. We want to see where a lot of eyes are currently focused on these plays, right? We have penny stocks to watch. See what comes on up here, right? They do have, you know, a membership program if you want to get a little bit more detail. But, you know, this is a very nice blog site where you can dive in, get a lot of good information, and stay up to date on a lot of, you know, penny stocks. Cool. That's absolutely what we want. Now, another very popular site, guys, is going to be Earnings Whisperer, right? So if we head over to Earnings Whisperer, this play is going to be showing us upcoming earnings. What stocks are expected to have positive earnings, right? What stocks are going to be coming out with negative earnings and which stocks, you know, just came out with positive or negative earnings. So we have, you know, the A's, top companies that reported the results that have been shown most likely to have positive earnings. The fives, the stocks that are most likely to go higher ahead of earnings and through the announcement. We have a short report, short interest peaks when stock bottoms, vice versa. So, I mean, there's a lot of great information right here. If you guys are a big earnings player, right? So if you guys are a big earnings player, you guys can look into this site. This is going to give you a lot of information about what's coming up and what you guys can you uh, expect. Now, earnings are still a little bit more on the gamble side, but that's usually one of the most you know, credible uh, sites that you guys can look at. What else do you guys need to be focusing on? You guys are also going to have to be focusing on Investopedia. Investopedia, take a moment. You know, bow down a little bit. Investopedia, this is where I got all my education for stock trading, guys. This is, you know, th you can really just go into a dark hole of Investopedia. <laughs> you really could. And, you know, why do I say that, guys? Because it just keeps going on and on and on. So let's say I want to type out, you know, what is, you know, yeah, let's go with what is a market order, right? And let's say right here. So it takes me right here, Investopedia, market order. So I type, you know, start with a market order. And I start going, all right, a market order is a request by an investor, usually made through a broker. And you could be reading all this and you start going into it. And then you're like, all right, what's average daily volume? And then you click average daily volume, right? And it goes, all right, well, what's volume? And then you start reading about volume. And then you start saying, oh, yeah, I want to learn more about technical analysis. And you start reading more about technical analysis, right? And it just keeps going, oh, okay, what's bar charts? Oh, you say, and now you start starting about bar charts. And then you start learning about candlesticks. You know, I used to spend hours and hours and hours on, you know, Investopedia reading one article and then it just takes me, you know, to another article where I learn about this and then I'm going through this and then this takes me to another article and another article, another article. So again, you know, you could start with day trading, right? So start with, you know, day trade or what is day trading and right when this, you know, brings you up, do, 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 right? You have day trading how to trade uh, ETFs, you know, it goes to something else and something else and something else. You know, you can really just, you know, get lost in here, but, you know, in a great way where you just keep getting surrounded by information and you just keep learning, learning, learning. On top of that, guys, they do have a simulator where you guys can go ahead and practice your trading, free to play. It's not going to be in real-time results. You know, you guys don't get, you know, like different scanners like you guys are seeing on this screen right here. 
but it's still a great way to practice, you know, trading in the market. So Investopedia, great thing that you guys can do. Absolutely. Another one of my favorite sites. Another one of my favorite sites, guys, is going to be stockcharts.com. So stockcharts.com, absolutely beautiful. This is the site I used to use all the time, and I still use it sometimes to do all my graphing. So if I want to check out a play, I saw CANF start popping on up. CANF, well, now I have the RSI right here. I have CANF. I could see some higher lows being built. I see the 50-day moving average coming across the top. I see the 200-day moving average, right? I used to get a lot of information right here on the MACD. If I want to, I could add, you know, different indicators such as, you know, 13 EMA right here at the bottom. You know, I can add that right there, right? Now I have this green line going across the board, right? If I want to check out a different play, right? I could check out XCLB, right? This stock right here, the stock, you know, was overbought on the RSI starting to fall on down, right? I could change some of these indicators. I can add, you know, another indicator if I wanted to. All right, so everything's you know all good. So there's so many different things that you can use here for free to be able to chart your place, right? And that's one of the best things about it, right? That you can use you know so many of this great stuff to chart your place, and that's one of my favorite things um, uh, about StockCharts.com. You get so much great information and so much free charting. You know, it's absolutely beautiful. Now, moving on, what do we have? CNBC, CNBC. This is just going to keep you updated on what's going on in the market. What's going on in the world, right? Here's why Netflix lost today, right? U.S. paid subscribers for the first time in, in eight years. So it lost on U.S. paid subscribers for the first time in eight years. And you can go ahead and you can see what's going on, right, in the current markets. And I like to read this, you know, over lunch hours. I like to read this maybe at the end of the day and see, you know, what's going on in the markets, what's going on in the U.S. markets. Right, we could just get our overall press releases right here. If we want to dive dive more into investing, what you know, it's going on, you know, with investments, different sectors. This is you know probably one of the most popular you know websites for just overall stock trading investing. It gives us a good understanding of what's going on with current events related to the stock market. What else can we look at, guys? Another great charting software, TradingView.com. If we want to look up some sort of play, let's go with CANF. We'll stick on that train right now. We type in on CINF, right? We have CINF. We could see the chart that's currently on right here. We could see the technicals if people are recommending selling or buying, right? If we want to, we can dive into a full feature chart where right here, we can go ahead and make different trend lines. We can do whatever we want. We can you know, zoom in a little bit more if we want to. We could drag the chart back. All right, we could go to a six month chart. We can go to a one day chart. We can go to a you know, year to date chart. We're also on this side getting the information, the headlines for CANF, a current watch list if we wanna build it. There's a lot of great information right here, right? We could add different indicators, right? So we could add different indicators right here along these lines. So, you know, that's absolutely great. You know, and uh, there's so much, you know, awesome things that we could do with these charts. So. You know, that's absolutely awesome to see. Uh, continuing on. Continuing on with these plays. What else can you guys look at? Well, you guys can look at Tradecaster, right? Tradecaster.com. Now, what's Tradecaster.com? Well, obviously, Tradecaster.com is the site that you guys are watching me live stream right now, right? Tradecaster.com. Not only, again, we, have, we work with uh, trade, um, TradingView. So you guys have your charts right here, right underneath here. If you guys want to look at CANF. Go ahead, put CANF right here. Here's all your headlines right here, right? You guys can change the charts how you want it. You guys can add different indicators or add a symbol if you guys want to. Change it to candlesticks. You guys can really do anything you guys need to. You want to add the, those moving averages, right? So yeah, here's your moving average. There you go. There's your moving average right here, nine moving average. You want to change the settings a little bit. Let's go to a, a 200 day moving average. Cool, change it to a 200 day moving average. We want to make it a little bit easier to see. Let's make it a good old um, black candle right here. Make it a little bit more thick. Cool. We see, I'll change some of this. Boom. And again, you know, it just makes it a lot easier. So, I mean, you guys have tons of charting on stock charts on, excuse me, on Tradecaster. You guys obviously have your video library where you guys are going to be having tons of information. Type in Deckmar Trades. You guys are going to be having your video library right here. You guys, as you guys know, have your, all the chat rooms with the live stream. 
You guys have Notepad, Twitter, Stock Twits, all that good stuff, guys. Of course, you know where you guys are listening to me right now on Tradecaster. So make sure you guys are here. On top of that, a lot of traders always ask me, hey, Sean, where can I track my trades? Where can I track, track my trades? Great website to track your trades is TraderView.com, where you can track your trades and see how you're doing, right? One of the best things to do is to figure out, you know, how you're doing as a trader. And how can you figure that out? By documenting all the trades that you guys make. When, you know, back in high school, and even, you know, a lot of sports teams do it today. You know, nearly every sports team do today. You know, what would I used to do a lot of times or, you know, our team used to do? Uh, I played on, on, the, on the basketball team. We would have a game and they videotape it. And the next day, we would go into the locker room or wherever and we would watch that film. And we would figure out, you know, what we did right and what we did wrong. And the coach would stand there. We'd watch the whole entire first half or the second half or maybe the full game. And we'd say, all right, that was a great job by you. Good job. Or it's saying, what are you doing here? You know, you completely missed out on the play. And then you recap what you did right and you recap what you did wrong. You want to figure out what you do wrong on a lot of plays, right? The only way to learn in stock trading is really to make mistakes and learn not to do those and to avoid them. There's so much trial and error in stock trading. And that's why I never like when people trade right away, right at the start, because you are going to lose at first and you're going to figure out things that work and things that don't work. So you don't want to be figuring out things that don't work on real money, on a real account. But that's why we document our trades. That's why you look over your trades to learn from them. You know what, what type of person always loses every single time? The person that gets extremely emotional as an angry. You know why? They take one trade, they get super mad, they walk away from their computer. They don't learn from their lesson. What do you think they do the next day? They make the same exact mistake and now they walk away. The next day, they make the same, uh, same exact mistake and walk away, right? The only way you learn from your trades is if you make a loss, right? If you take a loss, you say to yourself, why? Why did I lose? Well, now again, you can go back and figure out why you lost. Maybe it's a certain stock that you keep losing on. Maybe it's a certain setup. Maybe it's something, you know, a certain press release. You know, that's where you can learn to avoid it. So it's good to journal, analyze, and share your trades over on TraderView. What else is another free website that a lot of people like to use, guys? Another one is just going to be that good old Twitter, right? Good old-fashioned Twitter. You know, a lot of people are going to give some great ideas. You guys can follow me on Twitter if you guys don't already. I always post a lot of good information. And on top of that, guys, you can go ahead and click. You know, there's CAPR. And you can click CAPR, and you can get a lot of good information, you know, from people that are talking about CAPR. So again, you know, these are all things that, of course, you guys can look at on Twitter. Very popular website. I'm sure you have heard about it before. And, you know, there is a nice stock trading community on Twitter, right? Now, there is a, uh, a website called StockTwits, which is basically what? Which is basically Twitter for stock trading, for stock uh, traders. So you guys could follow me on StockTwits if you guys don't currently. But the thing about StockTwits is that's a lot of people just trying to pump and dump. So for instance, if we type in, we're sticking with the train of CANF because that's what we've been going with. A lot of these people, guys, that are talking about these plays, they are only trying to help themselves, right? They're just trying to pump it on up. A lot of these people don't have any idea what they're talking about with stock trading. They're just trying to pump it on up in some sort of way, all right? So sometimes you see the most ridiculous statements. And I remember when I first started trading. Right when I first started trading in stock, uh, when I first started trading, I found stock twits. I used to care about what these people think because since I was new, I thought everyone that was typing was knowing more than me. Right? What's the statistic? The statistic is, you know, almost ninety percent of traders are going to fail. So the majority of people that you see on here that you know are, you know, that you never heard of, they're probably going to fail. So the people that say, oh, okay, you know, this thing's going to the moon, trust me, if you don't buy, you're dumb, <laughs> right? Those type of people, they're not trying to do anything other than help their own position. But I remember when I first started trading, guys, I used to buy a stock. I used to see what people would talk about on stock twits towards it. And then a whole bunch of people would be like, oh, no, this thing's going to crash any moment. This is going to dump. But those are just people that are shorting it, saying that. So I would get out of my position, and what happens? And the stock would spike. Or I would be, let's say, looking to short apply, and they're saying, oh, it's short, so you guys are in trouble. Just wait for it. Just wait for it. And I would get out, and I would be correct, right? Don't let someone else over the internet 
that you don't even know their credibility scare you away from what you know. So many people study, so many people work so hard, so many people figure out the strategies that work best for them. And once one person tells them, oh, no, I wouldn't do that. that that's a very bad decision. It's like that person's probably in the losing percentage anyway, right? Unless they have you know, some sort of proven track record, you know, like I do, you know, I would not really even consider you know, what they're saying because most of these people are part-time traders just throwing money around and trying to persuade people to uh, push the stock in their favor. And that's it. So you need to be smart, of course, on what you're doing. All right. Last free website that we're going to be going over right here, guys, is going to be Zach's. Zach's a very popular website for analyzing stocks, for analysts talking about if their stock is going to be um, you know, a good buy or a good sell. It's almost along the lines of like Finviz as well, as you guys can do like different screeners. Um, and you guys can dive into their screeners. They come out, they talk about earnings, uh, different stocks right here about how, you know, how you can rank them bull of the day, bear of the day, uh, different research. So Zach's is good. I don't use it that often, but I know a lot of people do like to use it. So I wanted to throw it on this list. So you guys are fully, you know, 100% aware of it. So those are going to be the list of some of the most, you know, important best free sites. And, you know, I went over a good amount of them. Right, you know that was a that was a good amount of uh, free websites to use. We got one, two, three, four, five, ten, thirteen. Right, so we have you know a nice list of best free websites to use, and you guys can again take a picture of this. Obviously, you guys have this, and you guys are all set to be able to use these websites to make sure that you guys can you know save money, and on top of that, do what? Save money and become the best trader that you guys can possibly be. So I always want to help you guys save money and not go out because you guys are supposed to be saving that money to trade, not be you know, blowing that money on things that you guys don't need to spend money on, right? Use that money to a trade, invest into it to make more. All right. So we just went over our best free sites to use. Now let's go over a very important question. What are some of the best brokers to use, guys? Now, best brokers. Some of the most popular brokers are going to be E-Trade, TD Ameritrade, and for shorting, I'm going to say center point. All right. So if you guys are located in the United States, and if you guys aren't, don't worry. Again, we will get to that. If you guys are located in the United States, some of the best brokers and some of the most popular brokers are going to be E Trade, TD Ameritrade, and Center Point, which is more for shorters. All right. Now, as I said, guys, a broker today is not a person that you are going to be calling and you're going to be saying, hey, can you put me in on this trade? You are going to be doing it on your own right? You are going to be able to have the platform to enter and exit trades on your own. So let's look over some of these. Now, why E-Trade? Why TD Ameritrade? Why Centerpoint? Well, let's dive into it and let's talk about some of it. So E-Trade, this is one of the most popular. You may see E-Trade on TV a lot. Um, and E-Trade is just a very well-known, very credible, very popular broker. Now, I will say E-Trade is, is more long-term investing. You know, there's probably more people that are on E-Trade that are long-term investing rather than day trading. But that's not saying that there aren't good. I used E-Trade for the past, you know, I, I still use E-Trade now. I still use E-Trade now, but I used to use it a lot more um, when I first started. And then I switched over to TD Ameritrade, but I still use E-Trade right now. You know, I still like to use it. What, if you guys are looking on my screen right here, this is E-Trade's level two. So people always ask me, and it has one of the best level twos in the game. You know, it is so good to, to use. But E-Trade's level two, is uh, going to give us basically the perfect bid, the perfect ask, easy to follow, time and sales, very, very solid stuff right here. Now, the crazy thing about E-Trade is it's a platform, but everything's break offable, which means like when you get E-Trade Pro and you wanna you know, buy a stock, this is it, right? This is it right here. You know, we'll have what stock you wanna buy into. All right, let's say I wanna buy in on CODX. I buy CODX, how many shares I wanna buy? 1,000 shares, I wanna go ahead. And you have a, a limit order right here. All right, so I put a limit order right here. And then you're all set, you know, ready to rock and roll. So it's a very simple, very easy process. On top of that, after you get into your trade, so after you get into your trade, you guys are going to be able to uh, obviously follow your trade and see, you know, your order status. How's your status doing currently, right? So after you get into your trade, you'll be able to see it and make sure everything's good. Now, E-Trade does have a lot of, you know, awesome features as well. 
um, where you guys can go ahead and be able to make, you know, a, let me bring this over. I want to bring this over so you guys are all good. All right, let's see. Oh, here it is. So you guys will be able to, you know, be able to get a lot of good information. So I have a couple level twos up right here. All right, I have a couple level twos up right here. You can uh, have your order entry, and then you have a lot of different tools. You know, you do have a lot of tools. Order entry, order status, quick trade, alerts, charts, right? You know, you have your market depth, which is your level two. You have a lot of good stuff right here. And you know, you wanna get your charts, go ahead, bring up your charts, and then you can do everything you want right here. So there is a lot of good information. I don't want you to just think it's a couple boxes, um, but you know there is a lot of you know great stuff that you guys can go through, order these the way you want, and uh, be able to follow along. Now, a lot of the things for a broker nowadays, you know, for a broker nowadays, you guys don't need, you know, many different charts because a lot of the charting I use is just going to be for my scanners. And that's the thing, there's a difference between brokers and scanners. Now, what's the difference between broker and scanners? Broker is where you just place an order. Scanners are where you can find stocks and chart them like I do here. So really the only thing I would use on E-Trade is what? The only thing I use on E-Trade is just to place an order. It's the same exact thing guys with TD Ameritrade. TD Ameritrade is what I just use to place an order. Now let's move to TD Ameritrade. TD Ameritrade looks like this. So this is TD Ameritrade. Now TD Ameritrade, you can change it you know, many different ways. Um, and you guys will be able to see, you know, your orders. Again, this is when I tried to buy CODX this morning at 7.02 in the morning. Didn't ever got filled. Filled orders. Nothing was filled today. Zero dollars out of zero dollars, right? When you want to go ahead and actually make an order, you click trade right here. And you type in the same exact thing. You type in what stock you want. C-A-N-F, right? C-A-N-F. You go ahead to buy market, sell market. You can do T-I-F, which is pre-market or change it during the day. How many shares you want to trade. Or again, what they have right here, you know how E-Trade, right here, E-Trade was a ladder system, or excuse me, E-Trade was you just put, put limit order, pick the price you want, you know, 130, if the stock is currently at 135 or 120, right? And then you go ahead and buy. And when the stock comes down to 130, you'll get filled. This doesn't have that like that. This, they have use a ladder system. So let's see, we go to CODX, CODX, and the stock we currently see is at 135. If I want to get filled at 130, I just go ahead and place a limit order at 130. So again, if I wanted to place a limit order, let's do it low. So again, I don't get filled. I go, boom. Now I have a, a, a 600 you know, share limit order on CODX. After I get filled, I put it up where I want it. So I'm all good there. But let me cancel that so that doesn't get filled. Um, and you see it you know, comes up up here. So you know, whatever one you want to use, both are extremely good. Both are extremely credible. TD Ameritrade is a great um, TD Ameritrade is a great site that you guys are going to be able to make you know a lot of money on. Same exact thing with E Trade. You know they're just extremely popular, right? They're just extremely popular sites. So if it's E Trade or TD Ameritrade for you United States uh, citizens, this is where I recommend you can go. Now you can go outside the United States, and uh, some people like to do that, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But the final one I wanted to talk about, guys, was going to be CenterPoint Securities. Now, CenterPoint is, uh, I have not used them, but this is probably the most popular, you know, a a broker for shorting. People who like to short, CenterPoint, you know, is going to be one that you guys definitely want to look at. Now, the thing about CenterPoint is that they do cost a lot of money to open. How much money do you need to open up a Center, uh, CenterPoint account? Well, you need to be having at least $50,000 to you know, open up an account with CenterPoint. So you know, that is kind of the big con about it, but they are very good at what they do. So if you guys do have the funds, you guys can look into CenterPoint, and that's going to be very, very helpful. All right. Uh, the pro about E-Trade, yet, would be their level two. The, uh, the pro about TD Ameritrade is they're better for day trading. The con about E-Trade would be just because, you know, they don't have some of the same features that TD Ameritrade has because TD Ameritrade, I feel like, is shifting a little bit more towards day traders. The con about TD Ameritrade is they don't have any level two, you know, or they do have a level two. It's just not very good. You know, it's just, you can't really read it very well. The E-Trades level two is perfect. It's prime. So they both have pros and cons. I have both accounts open. Uh, I do a lot more trading on TD Ameritrade though. Center points more for shorters. Now, if we dive back in to our, you know, best brokers right here, what do we have? 
We also have to look at for our international traders. We have Interactive Brokers, Sure Trader, Trade Zero, Quest Trade, Trader Alliance, Use Stock Trade. Right? Now, hands down, my favorite brokers are TD Ameritrade and E-Trade. But just because you aren't located in the United States doesn't mean you can't trade. Right? Doesn't mean you guys can't trade. And that's because, you know, there are international brokers. Now, these international brokers, they don't follow the same rules as United States brokers. When a, when a broker is in the United States, what do they have to do? They have to follow the SEC laws, right? The Security Stock Exchange Commission. And there's PDT rules. That's kind of the big thing, you know, in, in day trading. These brokers don't have PDT rules. These brokers, again, can do whatever they want because they're not in, you know, United States land. They're, they're, some of these, you know, are out in the Bahamas. Some of these are in different countries. Some of these are all over the place. So while, you know, you guys can use them, you need to be careful, right? Now, again, if you want to use one of these brokers, there are some pros. And again, there are some cons. What are the pros? The pros, again, there are no PDT rules. There are no certain rules. You can trade as much as you want. The con about them is that they don't have any sort of regulations. You know, when you transfer your money to somewhere out of the country, your money could just disappear, right? It's not like, you know, oh, I ship my money over to, you know, some random island in the Caribbean, you know, and all of a sudden it's all gone. What are you going to do? You know, call 911 and say, oh, all my money's gone. It's like, where is it? It's like, oh, I wired it off to some company in the Caribbean and they took it from me, right? So you need to be very careful. Now, these are brokers that I know a lot of people have used before. I know a lot of people, you know, have been able to trade great, be able to get their money back, you know, not really have any sort of issues. Uh, but if you want to, you know, use them, if you are, you know, an international trader, these are probably the most popular ones. So again, these are ones that you guys can definitely, you know, start diving into, especially with day trading. These are popular ones. Interactive brokers, sure trader, trade zero, quest trade, trader lines, you stock trade. All right. So make sure you guys check these out if you guys are international traders. Now, something we're seeing a lot more nowadays are going to be mobile brokers, right? Mobile brokers. People are always on the go. They're always looking to trade. Right, so mobile brokers, what do we have here? We have Robinhood and Webbull. Now, we probably heard Robinhood. Webbull is one that's starting to come on up a little bit more. But mobile broking, you do have to be careful because you guys aren't going to have what? You guys aren't going to have, you know, level two and, you know, great charting while being able to watch different scanners and your P&L and everything that's going on. So you guys do have to be careful, you know, with your mobile brokerage. But if you guys are interested, these are two, you know, very popular ones that you guys can dive into. All right. So on this lesson so far, I wanted to talk, of course, you know, about, you know, international brokers, best brokers to the United States, best free sites to use, and just go over absolutely everything. Again, I think we're laying down perfect groundwork to have this foundation and be able to build that enterprise that you guys are looking in your stock trading on top of this now, because now we are starting to go into move. We have one more hour lesson to start to finalize our foundation before we start getting into the good stuff before we start getting into um, you know, how we're going to make money. You know, let's get involved with our actual trades, what different chart setups we have, our indicators we use, the time frames we use. So we're just about there. Just wanna always make sure that you guys have the information you need and have a good understanding in your mind right now about where we're heading. But awesome job, happy to help you guys out. Let's get ready for your afternoon, you know, one hour lesson as well.